Comparing poems is an essential component to your GCSE exams. But what could you compare the first six poems of the WJEC Educast Poetry Anthology to? Let's find out. What's going on Revision Squad? It's me, Liam, aka Mr Knight, aka Dystopia Junkie, and I am back with yet another GCSE Poetry Anthology revision video for you. Building on from what you lot have asked for, I thought I would have a look at each poem in the WJEC Educast Poetry Anthology and have a quick chat about which ones might compare nicely with each other. Now this is part one of my discussion of the various poems, going from the manhunt to living space and covering the poems in between them in your anthology too. So how about you grab a pen and some paper so that you can make notes of the things that I say over the course of this video, and why not drop it a like now so that you don't forget? And of course, if you aren't already, please do subscribe to my channel as that helps me to help even more people. Now of course, the ideas in this video are my own and are based on my opinions. Therefore, it is totally okay to disagree, and if you do disagree with the comparisons I make in this video, please do let me know why down in the comments section below. Okay, so I'm only going to compare each poem to two others, purely for the sake of not making this video massively long. If you are looking for more possible comparisons, think about which poems share themes, as that will give you a nice starting point. In fact, I've already made a video that goes over various themes in this anthology, so why don't you go and watch that once you finish watching this video? Anyway, which two poems could you choose to compare The Manhunt to? Well, you could choose to compare it to Sonnet 43. Both poems are love poems whose rhyme schemes could be seen as symbolising the relationships that they depict. In the manhunt, for instance, the weakening, then strengthening rhyme scheme could be reflective of Eddie and Laura's relationship as they deal with his PTSD. In Sonnet 43, the ever so slightly imperfect rhyme scheme could mirror that Barrett Browning was not used to such intense and perfect love. Furthermore, the repetition of and in the manhunt creates a list-like effect suggesting that the process of putting Eddie back together again is long and arduous, whereas the repetition of I love thee in Sonnet 43 is near obsessive and suggests that Elizabeth's love for Robert is never ending. You could also contrast these poems, looking at how there are images of weakness, destruction and fragility in the manhunt, whereas there are stronger, more whole and complete images in Sonnet 43, such as the reference to the sun. The Manhunt also features very tangible, concrete, physical language, whereas Sonnet 43 is more metaphysical, mentioning souls, the ends of being, and faith. Or maybe you could compare The Manhunt with A Wife in London. Both are war poems that don't actually depict a battlefield. The sweating, unexploded mine in The Manhunt is an image for Eddie's trauma and PTSD, whereas the fog could reflect the wife's feelings of sadness and grief in A Wife in London. There's loads of images of fragility in reference to Eddie's mind and body in The Manhunt, which is similar to A Wife in London, since the waning taper, glimmering street lamp and flickering fire are all fragile and weak, which could reflect the fact that the husband's soldier died in battle. Of course, you can also contrast these poems. In The Manhunt, time is looked at positively, since it is time that allows Eddie to heal, whereas in A Wife in London, time is cruel and inflicts extra pain on the wife. Furthermore, you could contrast these poems as Eddie survives his experience of war and Laura seems hopeful, whereas the soldier dies in A Wife in London and the wife, she seems to lose all hope. OK, so which poems could you compare or contrast Sonnet 43 to? Well, you could compare it to The Manhunt, which I've literally just discussed. Or you could compare it to The Soldier. Both poems are love poems in a sense, as evidenced by their use of the sonnet form. Both poems also use religious and metaphysical language, 
Barrett Browning routinely compares her lover to God, and Brooke compares England to heaven. If you're looking to contrast these poems, a good starting place would be in discussing the types of love that they present, and how language and imagery achieves those depictions. If you're really looking to hit those top marks, could you even comment on the lack of a stanza break in Sonnet 43, but the presence of one in The Soldier? What could that represent? And now we're going to think about William Blake's London. Well, you could think about the poem Living Space. Both poems are immensely critical of their settings. The eponymous city in Blake's poem and the Mumbai slums in Darker's. In both poems, the people seem to be powerless, and the settings in which they live dictate their existences in one way or the other. Looking at how the poets use language to convey these ideas might be a good basis for comparison. Now, if you wanted to contrast these poems, though, you could start by looking at the structure of the two poems. London has a very ordered structure, four four-line stanzas of alternate rhyme whereas the living space has no discernible regularity or order. These structures are polar opposites, and yet perhaps they achieve the same effect. The exact effect, though? I'll leave that for you to figure out. Aside from the structure of these poems, you could also look at how the poets refer to religion in them. Blake seems particularly scornful towards the church, as you would expect because of his religious beliefs whereas religion seems to provide hope and encouragement to the people who live in the slums. This hope is something that separates the two poems. There is hope at the end of living space, whereas there appears to be no hope in London, given that the next generation, the newborn infants, are similarly affected by the negativity of London. And if you don't fancy comparing London to living space, why not compare it to afternoons instead? Both poems have consistent stanza lengths, which could be indicative of a sense of control or routine or a never-ending cycle. Again, both poems have a critical tone, but whereas this criticism is directed at the City of London and the people in power in Blake's poem, the criticism in Afternoons seems to be directed more at the institution of marriage, women, domestic life and getting older. So although both poems use language to evoke this tone, the tone is directed at different things. Control is a key idea in both poems, and they deal with this theme in a similar way, as the people in both poems seemingly have no control of their lives. Marriage is referred to in both poems and is seemingly a basis for criticism in them. Blake uses the wonderfully oxymoronic image, marriage hearse, to express his distaste towards marriage, whereas Larkin presents marriage as something unromantic and almost unbearably ordinary, which might be expected given his personal life. Children are also mentioned in both poems, and are a source of hopelessness, given that children cannot avoid London's control, and that they are doomed to repeat their parents' actions in Afternoons. If you wanted to contrast these poems, you could look at how rhyme is used, the rigid rhyme scheme in Blake's poem could reflect the amount of control that the city, or those who are in charge of it, exerts on its residents. Still using this sort of idea, the lack of rhyme scheme in Afternoons could indicate that, although the people in this poem are powerless, there is nobody in particular who is controlling them, and their fate, or well, it's more natural and organic. What can we say about the soldier? Well, you could compare it to Sonnet 43, which I discussed just a little bit earlier. But to be honest, there is one poem that I think compares perfectly with The Soldier, and that is none other than Dolce e Decorum Est. Now, obviously, they are both war poems and are both about soldiers. Great. To be honest, it's contrasting that you're going to be doing a lot of here. These poems' tones are polar opposites. Brook uses language and imagery to create a hopeful and positive tone that depicts the soldier persona as a valiant hero who is doing an incredibly courageous thing and making the ultimate sacrifice. Compare this to Owen's poem, which instead is much more negative and brutal and dark in its tone and use of imagery. This difference is a consequence of the poem's contexts. Brook 
He never actively fought in war, and his poem is almost propagandistic, whereas Owen fought and suffered dreadfully in battle. Both poems also use specific rhyme schemes. The soldier follows the sonnet form, whereas Dolce uses alternate rhyme. The rhyme scheme of the soldier reflects Brooks' romanticised views of war, whereas the slow, trudging, alternate rhyme of Dolce mirrors soldiers as they march, showing that Owen was aware of the harsh realities of battle. Which poems might I compare She Walks in Beauty to? Well, of course, you could compare it to Sonnet 43, seeing as they are both, to some degree, love poems. Or are they? There is certainly a lot of love in Sonnet 43, given how Elizabeth Barrett Browning speaks mostly about Robert Browning's personality and character. On the other hand, Lord Byron focuses primarily on the unnamed woman's appearance first, before then, yes, going on to her personality, suggesting that his poem is less about love and more about the physical, lust. Both poems make use of imagery, but She Walks in Beauty features imagery that is mostly centred on the natural world, whereas Sonnet 43 is a bit more metaphysical in its use of imagery. Again, this distinction could relate to the love versus lust dichotomy. Nature is less concerned with emotions and is more focused on the physical, whereas the metaphysical imagery is more strongly associated with deeper aspects than someone's appearance, suggesting a more genuine love. The poems use different forms too. She Walks in Beauty is a lyric poem and is therefore meant to be accompanied by music. This suggests that the poem is a bit more performative. It is a display. Now, I'm not saying that I doubt the authenticity of Lord Byron's emotions in his poem, but the fact that it was supposed to be public facing makes me wonder if it is a bit over the top or brash or full of bravado, especially considering he was a bit of a celebrity. Compare this to Sonnet 43. The sonnet form holds love at its centre, and when a consideration of this is added to the fact that Barrett Browning wrote this poem for her future husband as she wrote a letter to him, making it private, I think that this makes the emotions in this poem seem much more genuine and heartfelt than those in Lord Byron's poem. Finally, we could consider the locus of the relationship, i.e. which partner, if any, is the focus of the poem. In She Walks in Beauty, Lord Byron writes extensively about the love object, the beautiful woman. On the other hand, in Sonnet 43, the poem is more directly focused on the persona's feelings. Now maybe you don't want to compare She Walks in Beauty with Sonnet 43. Instead, you could choose to compare it to Valentine. Both are love poems if you want to call She Walks in Beauty a love poem, and both use some natural imagery. But then Valentine also uses some more materialistic imagery, as seen in the images of the brown paper bag, photograph and wedding ring. Because Valentine mentions a wedding ring, it could be argued that it is a more genuine love poem, compared to Lord Byron's more physical and perhaps lust-focused poem. The structure of She Walks in Beauty is very rigid and follows a traditional form. This more traditional form could reflect that the love depicted in the poem is probably heterosexual. Contrast this with the structure of Valentine. It is irregular and has no clear shape and follows no prescribed form. This could mirror the fact that Caroline Duffy is bisexual a sexuality that was not openly accepted or seen as normal or traditional in the 90s, which is when she wrote this poem. Finally, the persona in She Walks in Beauty seems to be a bit more certain in their emotions, and their love, if we can call it love, seems to be quite safe. On the other hand, in Valentine there are occasional references to violence, as seen in Knife, and the persona seems less confident in their love, as seen in For As Long As We Are, and, if you like, this could be a really interesting point for you to discuss in your comparative writing. And what can we say about living space? Well, we could compare it to London, which I discussed just a little bit earlier. Or how about we compare it to Cozy Apologia? 
Both poems are about specific places. In the case of Living Space, that is the Mumbai slums, whereas in Cozy Apologia, Dove writes about what we can assume is her house. Both poems are also very image heavy. In both poems, this adds a sense of texture and tangibility, the vividness of which makes the situations presented in each poem all the more visceral. Now, although both poems are about specific places, they present different kinds of place. In Living Space, the setting poses a challenge to the people who live there, whereas Dove's home protects her against Storm Floyd. This distinction lends itself to conflicting tones, because whereas Darker describes the Mumbai slums using a critical tone, as seen in That Is The Problem, Dove creates a comforting tone when talking about her home, as seen in I'm Perched In Mine. Living Space takes a more general approach to the issue at hand, the difficulties of living in the Mumbai slums. In doing this, Darker is highlighting how massive and near insurmountable the issue is. Conversely, the issue of Storm Floyd is de-escalated in Dove's poem, precisely because Dove discusses it with respect to only one person's experience. Add to this that Dove seems perfectly secure in her house, and uses the storm as an excuse to reminisce and reflect on her love for her husband. Suddenly, Storm Floyd seems pretty insignificant. There's a really interesting but minor comparison you could make with regards to religion as well. In living space, faith, either in the religious sense or in the sense of generally believing in something, seems to be the thing that keeps the people in the slums going. Faith is essential to their continued survival. Now contrast this with the reference to religion in Cozy Apologia, in which Dove says that she and Fred are content but fall short of the divine. This could suggest that religion or faith is less important to Dove as long as she has her husband. So whilst faith is a necessity for the people in the slums, it is almost irrelevant to Dove. So there you go, I have discussed which poems I might compare The Manhunt, Sonnet 43, London, The Soldier, She Walks in Beauty and Living Space too. I do hope that this video has helped you to think about how you might go about comparing these poems, as well as some of the others in the anthology, which should help you out with your GCSE studies. If this video has helped you out, please do consider giving it a like. I will be covering the other 12 poems in two more videos, so if you want to make sure that you definitely see those, make sure you are subscribed to my channel and that you have turned on those notifications as well if you have not done so already. Now as ever, I hope that you have an awesome rest of the day. If you are revising, please do remember to take frequent short breaks, as a burned out student is not a happy or successful student, which is what I think you deserve to be. Well there you go, those are the poems that I reckon you should be comparing those first six poems of the WJEC Educast Poetry Anthology to. But are there some other comparisons or connections for those first six poems that you think are better? Please do let me know down in the comments section below. Cheers.